What's up, guys? We are getting ready to start a Robot Master Weapons only run of Mega Man and Base for the Game Boy Advance. The rules are quite simple. You're never ever to use the Mega Buster except on your very first Robot Master. You can't use the Mega Buster at all throughout his stage. You can use whichever character you feel like in this game. Between Mega Man and Base, use whichever one you want. Uh, you, if you're using Mega Man, you can't use Rush, Beat, or Eddie. And if you're using Base, you can't use Treble. This is strictly a Robot Master Weapons only run. We will be using Mega Man. I always thought of the little thumbs up uh, marker there to, as like a little symbol saying that he gets more partners because he gets Rush, Eddie, and Beat. If you choose Base as your selected character, then it shows his three little tabs as having rapid firing and an aimable buster, double jumping, and dashing. But if you choose Mega Man, it just shows sliding and charged shots. So I always thought of the thumbs up as a symbol saying that he gets more help because he's more friendly or something. Heck, I don't know. I doubt that that's what it means, but eh, whatever. I love this intro stage. I love how it mixes elements from different Mega Man games. Like back there, you've seen elements from Fireman stage in Mega Man 1. The mole hallways that you see here and there throughout the stage are from Metal Man stage in Mega Man 2. You have the submarine segment from Blizzard Man stage in Mega Man 6. Later on, you'll see Rain from Toad Man stage in Mega Man 4. This is just a really, really neat intro stage. Heck, even the Green Devil from Mega Man 8 is the boss of this stage. But then again, a whole bunch of stuff from Mega Man 8 was reused in this game. This game was originally released for the Super Famicom in Japan. It was never released in America until it got ported to the Game Boy Advance. I'm pretty impressed with how they were able to put this on the Super Nintendo. It has Mega Man 7's uh, sound effects, but it has Mega Man 8's graphics and everything. It's just pretty cool how they were able to take PlayStation 1 graphics and bring them over to a Super Nintendo game. Whenever you look at all the Robot Master stages here in Mega Man and Base, you can see that they pretty much took all the level designs from Mega Man 8 and just reused them, but I'm fine with that. They did a really good job doing it. I love how in the background of the boss chamber throughout here you see the many bosses from Woodman stage. One thing that I never really did care for about Mega Man and Base is how much of a pushover Proto Man can be. I mean, the dude goes down in one swipe of King's Axe. I mean, come on, he didn't even try to dodge there. But I love his little line that he says after uh, after he gets chopped in half. Proto Man, it's just a scratch. Yeah, yeah, your whole body was just torn in half, but it's just a scratch. The Green Devil is a complete pushover compared to how he was in Mega Man 8, but hey, that's to be expected. He's just the intro boss. But I do like that they brought him back, at least. It's a pretty neat little throwback to Mega Man 8. Alright, with the intro stage now down and out, it's time to start the Robot Master levels. We only have three choices here at the start. Cold Man, Astro Man, and Ground Man. Cold Man and Ground Man both have mini bosses, so you can't fight them because they force buster use. So your only choice is Astro Man. I like the background here. I like the satellite to the left, and I like how it looks like at the top it's just a mirrored version of the bottom of the screen, kinda. Whatever the case, though, Mega Man and Base has a really interesting setup for the stage select. For each Robot Master that you defeat, it opens up new routes to other Robot Masters, which is pretty interesting. It's unique, that's for sure. Although I'd rather have all eight Robot Masters selectable from the start, I mean, I'm fine with this. It's pretty unique and interesting how they set it up, and I don't mind it at all. I remember reading a while back that the whole reason why they reuse Astro Man and Tengu Man here at Mega Man Base is because both of them are both made by Capcom themselves. They weren't made by, like, contest entries or anything like that. So that's kind of interesting. I don't mind Astro Man and Tengu Man coming back, but I would have rather have had two unique Robot Masters, but hey, I like them. They're okay. I was saying earlier about how all the stages in Mega Man and Base are based off the stages from Mega Man 8. Well, obviously Astro Man and Tengu Man stages are pretty much based off of their own, so that's to be expected. One thing that I like about Mega Man and Base, besides being able to play as Base, of course, is that you can hunt down CDs. Uh, the CDs contain data on past Robot Masters. They even contain data on certain other robots as well, like the Mega Man Killers and the Genesis Unit, people like that, so that's pretty fun as well. Once you've collected the CDs, they never come back unless you decide to erase your database and collect them all again, which I have done a few times. I find it quite a bit of fun, adds uh, some replayability to the game. 
You can't collect uh, all the CDs unless you beat the game with both characters because you'll need both of their abilities to get them all. Got some Yoku blocks throughout here. These ones move kind of fast, so be sure to keep up with them. We don't have a whole lot more left to this stage. I find this little enemy to be interesting. I mean, he's not hard or anything. You just have to pay attention to the way how he lights everything up. It's pretty much like Simon says. So I find it pretty interesting. If you mess up, the turret at the top will shoot at you. But, but like I said, it's not a hard enemy or whatever. It's more an interesting enemy than anything, a puzzle-based one. And here we are at Astro Man. I love Astro Man's little intro here at the start of the fight, the little 3-2-1 countdown in the background. It's pretty neat. Astro Man fights completely different than he did in Mega Man 8. His most annoying attack is his little nose dives that he can do. That's pretty much the only attack that he regularly will hit me with. His other attack that he can do is create enemies. Leave at least one of them bouncing around because it'll cause Astro Man to appear above you and then dash down. That attack is really easy to dodge and it's certainly the one that you want him to do because it lets you get in a few fully charged buster shots in on him. Here's another one of his attacks. He sends the balls that orbit him down at you and just jump over them and shoot him. And the last of his attacks is his copy vision move, where he'll fly to one side, make a copy of himself, fly to the other side, do the same. Just time your slides as you go back and forth and you can dodge everything pretty easily. Overall, Astro Man isn't too bad if you really know what you're doing. It, like I said earlier, if you destroy any of these little enemies, then Astro Man will start nose diving at you and stuff, or he'll start a new attack altogether. So be sure to try and leave at least one of those smaller enemies around. For defeating Astro Man, you get the Copy Vision weapon. Whenever you use Copy Vision, it makes a clone of Mega Man that constantly shoots for a little while. Its shots are actually pretty powerful. On top of that, you can shoot your own buster to help the clone kill stuff even faster. But you cannot do that in this run out, obviously, since the buster is against the rules. On top of all that, uh, the clone will also draw in enemy fire, so if there are any enemies that have homing attacks, they'll trace the clone instead of the real Mega Man. Stuff like Tellies will also go for the clone instead of the real Mega Man. So overall, Copy Vision is a really good weapon. Next up we'll be taking out Dynamo Man. Looking at his stage and seeing all these explosives suggests that his stage is based off of Grenade Man's from Mega Man 8. You'll have to use uh, Copy Vision here and there throughout the stage, but try to save as much of it for Dynamo Man as you can. I really love his stage music. It's really good, in my opinion. One of my favorite songs from Mega Man and Bass. But like I said, try to save as much a copy vision as you can. Only use it whenever you're absolutely forced to. Besides fighting Dynamo Man, you also have to use copy vision to destroy some explosives here and there, as well as fight a mini boss. The mini boss will take four copy visions to destroy. So, like I said, be absolutely sure to try to save as much copy vision as you can. Later on in the stage, there will be quite a few large weapon capsules here and there, but there's always a chance that you might accidentally mess up and not be able to grab one of them. So be very careful about that. I love how they put stuff in the foreground to try to hide the fire emits. Pretty neat. We're not too much further from the mini-boss of the stage, just right up this ladder here. Lure the spark that this thing fires down here, then run for it. Get up here and wait for another spark to be fired, take a hit, and then run. I'll go ahead and use another copy vision. There we go. I'm pretty confident that I can get the weapon energy later on in the stage, but from here on out, I'm going to save every last bit of copy vision that I can. Here we are at the mini boss of the stage, which is these eye type enemies that move up and down the wall. They can shoot toxic goo at you, or they can fire homing projectiles. Occasionally, they'll line up and fire a beam of energy back and forth. Just time your jumps really well to avoid it. Do not set up copy vision to attack the enemies that move up and down the walls directly. Instead, attack the things that would normally keep dispensing them. And they'll just be destroyed that way. Here's an interesting part of the stage. It's all dark and you got the spotlight lighting up the area. Time your jump really well to grab the weapon energy up there. You can use certain weapons to help light up the area, like Wave Burner if you have that. Of course you won't if you're doing a weapons only run, but still. You have to use a copy vision to destroy these explosives. Let it take out the fire met. 
as well as the monopel and the little orange helicopter dudes because they might be able to drop some weapon energy for you as well the whole rest of the stage is on a uh, conveyors which I don't mind it's a pretty fun little stage element I suppose coming up you'll have to take a hit be sure to jump in the air before you take that hit because if you're still on the conveyor whenever you take it there's a chance that you'll be thrown off into the hole so just be sure that you jump before you take any hits and we are now at Dynamo Man Dynamo Man puts up a pretty fun fight I think so anyway he's a little bit cheap in the way how he can heal himself but if you're quick he won't heal himself that much here in a weapons only run though he can royally screw you over if he chooses to heal himself twice in one match which he will do occasionally and if he does choose to heal himself twice you're screwed you won't have enough weapon energy to outlast him he has a few attacks one that, that you see right here where he creates the balls of energy that home in on you if you're using copy vision though of course they'll home in on the clone his other attack is to fire off those three energy balls into the air and then cause lightning to fall down just dodge it like you see me move forward a little bit every few seconds if you shoot off the balls of energy that circle around him before they go into the air then uh, he won't get the chance to shoot off the lightning bolts his uh, final attack will be to shoot off a whole bunch of electrified pillars that you see right here just learn the pattern of them and they ain't so bad use copy vision to take out his little regenerating machine you can get rid of a clone right of the way if you press the R button or the L button. Do not do that as soon as you've destroyed the healing machine. Instead, leave one up there because he'll jump right into it and you'll get an extra hit off. He should be down and out now. There we go. I love how the little dome on his head has to shatter. It's just a really cool ending animation, I think. For defeating Dynamo Man, you get the Lightning Bolt weapon, which is an attack all weapon and hits all enemies on the screen. It's a pretty good weapon. It's got decent strength and it doesn't use up that much weapon energy. Plus, it looks pretty cool. Lightning Bolt hits Mega Man, then he throws his arms into the air and strikes everything down. Overall, it's a pretty good weapon. Next up, we're going to take out Cold Man. Even though we have Cold Man's weakness, which is the Lightning Bolt, there isn't enough lightning bolt to completely wipe out Cold Man, even with a full bar of weapon energy. So you have to save some of Copy Vision to also fight him with. Plus, on top of that, Cold Man stage has a mini boss, a giant snowman, which you will have to use Copy Vision for. Uh, you have to use at least two Copy Visions for the snowman mini boss, and you have to have at least four Copy Visions for Cold Man. So that leaves you four Copy Visions to use whenever you want throughout the stage. I'd recommend just using them whenever you absolutely have to. In fact, I'd even recommend saving one or two for Cold Man if you can. As you may have guessed, Cold Man stage is based off of Frost Man stage from Mega Man 8. Well, with them both being ice bait robot masters and everything. I really like the little shattering platforms here and there. Makes you uh, stay on your toes and keep moving time your jumps and your slides throughout here and you won't have any problem dodging the enemy's shots as well as falling onto the spikes. Grab the health on this screen and you got the mini boss down below. I really like how you can see frozen Mets in the background inside of the ice. Kinda reminds me of Frost Walrus' stage from Mega Man X4. Do your very best to position the copy visions correctly since you'll have to also save weapon energy in the copy vision to fight Cold Man with. Two copy visions will be good enough to wipe out the mini boss. If you need health, you can slide to the left down here. Just crack the first platform and slide to the left. We don't need any though, of course, since we're full health. Throughout this area, you'll have those ice platforms that shatter underneath you. Some of them take you down to spikes, others take you down to a whole different area. Whatever the case, try not to fall down whatsoever. Try to stay along the top and just keep on moving. We're not too much further from Cold Man. I really like the music in his stage. It's not my favorite tune, but it is a pretty good song in my opinion. I love how Cold Man is based on a refrigerator. Kind of a funny design for an ice-based robot master. We're on the final stretch of the stage now. Not much besides penguins and ice makers. I love riding the big ice block across that big hole. It's always fun to me for some reason. 
One thing that I would have loved to see in Mega Man Base that you don't really see around is uh, King's little emblem. I mean, in the other Mega Man games, you see the Dr. L for Dr. Light in Mega Man 9. You see Dr. Wily's symbol all over the place. Stuff like that, but you never see King's symbol above any of the boss doors. Whatever the case, though, we are now at Cold Man. Start off by using Copy Vision. Get right up in his face and shoot it so that it uh, goes behind the ice wall that he makes. That way the copy vision isn't sitting there shooting the ice wall instead of hitting Cold Man. Be sure to wait after each copy vision to see if Cold Man's going to jump to a new location or not. After you've gotten him with three copy visions, start using a lightning bolt. Use it all the way up until you're completely out of it. Once you've uh, ran out of lightning bolt, use your last copy vision on Cold Man to take him out right away. And there we go. Cold Man is now down and out. For defeating Cold Man, you get the Ice Wall weapon, which is a pretty powerful weapon if you hit an enemy with it. It can be used as a frontal shield of sorts. You can make one, then it'll block certain enemy attacks from the front. Uh, you can use it as a stepping stone. If you make one, then you can hop on top of it and then hop up to a higher area. And you can also use it as a sled of sorts. If you make it, then push it and hop on top of it as it starts to move. You can ride it to certain areas. Overall, it's not too bad of a weapon. It's really powerful. And it has a uh, little fun utility uses. Next up, we're going to try to take out Burner Man. I really like the whole backstory for Burner Man, and I really like how they reuse Search Man's stage graphics and everything for his stage. It's kind of interesting to see a fire-based robot master in a forest. His whole backstory is that... Uh, King told him that he'd explode if he didn't burn down one forest a day, so that's why he has this forest stage. Pretty interesting how they came up with a story to fit him into the forest area. Throughout his stage, all you really have to look out for as far as weapon energy is concerned is Ice Wall, because that's Burner Man's weakness. Other than that, you can pretty much use Copy Vision and Lightning Bolt as much as you want, assuming that you uh, keep everything up on energy, of course. All you really gotta do is make sure that Ice Wall has pretty good weapon energy in it whenever you get to Burner Man. I really like this whole little area right here and how it has a bunch of hidden floors. If you don't know where the hidden floors are, you could use Ice Wall to figure out where they're at, but just remember that you need that for Burner Man. If you're using Copy Vision, be careful if you decide to get rid of the clone a little early. Try not to shoot too soon, otherwise Mega Man might accidentally shoot off a normal buster shot which is obviously against the rules and you don't want to do that. Ice Wall is a pretty good weapon on these creatures, the two eyes that have electricity between them. Just use it on the top eye and it'll fall and destroy the bottom eye as well. Use Copy Vision here. There we go. I kind of like Burner Man's music, it's pretty good. It's not my favorite song in Mega Man and Bass, but it is pretty good. I like this little base that we're inside of here. Although I do like being out in the forest area a little more. I kind of like the area that's getting ready to come up right here. I used to really hate it whenever I was younger, but now I don't mind it so much. I find it kind of fun to dodge these spears. This is something that you never seen in Search Man stage in Mega Man 8. This is a Burner Man exclusive. We're just about to the end of this area. Yeah, the spears move pretty fast, but I, I do find it pretty fun to try and dodge all of them. This area here is pretty good for farming for bolts if you want to because those flying creatures never quit coming. I'll just use lightning bolt all throughout this area. You've got these uh, giant tellies coming around. They'll drop big bombs that'll light the whole area on fire. So be careful of that. Just get up high if he manages to catch everything on fire. And we got another big telly here. They're all over the place throughout this area. But this is the final stretch of the stage. Right, right after we're done going through here, we will be a Burner Man. We're just about to the ladder. Right here. I always like the little dragon-type creatures that we just destroyed. They're kind of cool. Here we are, Burner Man. Burner Man actually isn't too bad to fight if you know how to work around him. He'll dash back and forth across the screen before doing one of a few attacks. He can jump up into the air and dive down at you, releasing fire to the left and right of him. If he decides to do that, just stay close to him. He'll dive really slowly at you. 
another one of his attacks is to send out a few bear traps. Try not to let the bear traps get a hold of you. And just avoid his wave burner. And his last attack is to throw a few grenades. Which, uh, once you hit him, he'll start using his wave burner again. Unless you use ice wall on him, of course. I always really enjoyed fighting him with the ice wall. I just think that's hilarious to push him into the spikes. Whatever the case, though, with Burner Man now down and out, we get the Wave Burner weapon, which is pretty much just a flamethrower, really. Nothing much else to it. It's a pretty powerful weapon. You can light fuses and destroy stuff with it. It's got pretty good strength. You can continually damage enemies with it. It can also hit enemies below the Buster's firing range. So overall, it is a really good weapon. It's short range, but it's a pretty good weapon. If you're underwater, it makes little waves that can push mines out of your way, stuff like that. Next up, we're going to try to take out Pirate Man. In the credits for Mega Man 8, they show the contest entries for the eight robot masters that made it into Mega Man 8. But they also showed uh, some of the other entries that didn't make it into Mega Man 8. And I believe that Pirate Man was probably one of them, because I remember seeing a robot master entry that looked a lot like a pirate. Uh, he had an arm cannon that looked like a barrel, and he had an anchor inside of the arm cannon. I'm pretty sure that's where they probably got the idea for Pirate Man. I could be wrong about that, but that particular concept art always reminded me of Pirate Man. I like Pirate Man's music quite a bit. I think that's one of my more favorite songs from Mega Man and Bass. It's a pretty good one. I also like how open his stage is. It's pretty neat. And I like how the wave burner functions underwater. That's also pretty neat that they gave that uh, an effect that makes sense with uh, using it underwater. Just lure that guy over here. There we go. Obviously, Pirate Man stage is based off of Aquaman stage from Mega Man 8. I kind of wish that you could still swim around. I really like doing that in his stage in Mega Man 8. found that kind of fun. I really enjoy zapping all these creatures with Lightning Bolt. Normally, I'd use Ice Wall down here to take out the little whale guy that swims by. Instead, I'll just use a Copy Vision so I can take out the octopus or the squid. Just run for it. I like the way how you can see uh, sunken ships in the background in this area. You can see them to the back back there. It's pretty cool, I think. It uh, suits Pirate Man's character because I believe that uh, he was created strictly to destroy ships and take their treasure and stuff. Which is why Dive Man hates him, I believe. Whatever the case, though, we are now at Pirate Man. Pirate Man really only has a couple of attacks. He can shoot remote mines at you, which you yourself can lead. His other attack is he can encase himself inside of a bubble and bounce around the room. If he decides to bounce around the room inside the bubble, let him move a little bit before popping it. That way he twirls around and falls to the floor. You can get him more damage on him that way. As you can see, the water in the room will slowly drain out. Once it gets uh, kind of low, Pirate Man will raise the water level again. Overall, it's a pretty fun battle. I really like the little touch of all the treasure in the background. Pretty neat. I like the way how it looks. For defeating Pirate Man, you get the Remote Mine weapon, which is really powerful, and obviously you can control it and choose whenever you want to detonate it. It's a really good weapon. It uses a decent weapon energy for what kind of a weapon it is and how powerful it is. I use it quite a bit myself. It's really powerful and you can control it and choose whenever you want to detonate it. I love sticking it to Met's helmets and then detonating it right whenever they get ready to come up. Kills them before they can even do anything. Next up we're going to take out Ground Man. It may not seem like it, but Ground Man stage is actually based on Sword Man stage. And the fact that both stages are based on ancient ruins and stuff. The big difference is that Sword Man stage has lava and stuff everywhere, whereas here in Ground Man stage you got these sand falls and everything. Later on, uh, coming right up actually, you'll be sinking inside of sand, right here. So yeah, pretty neat stage I think. I like the little dragons on the wall in the background, that's pretty cool. Just use the ice wall to take out these little worms. Try to make the ice wall a little early. If you wait until the worm is right in your face and make an ice wall, then the ice wall will be in your way like that. Most of these worms you don't even have to worry about fighting because they'll have little areas for you to slip into to hide away from them. So really, it's all up to you whether or not you want to destroy them. I usually do, though. Don't have any reason not to. 
We have a mini boss coming right through those boss gates up there. Which is another giant worm. I usually use wave burner on it. Destroy it as it passes by. Ice wall doesn't do too bad either. Really, if you just memorize all the patterns that this worm follows whenever he comes out, then he's really easy. There's one pattern where you can score a lot of free damage in, where he'll just come out on the left side of the room and go down, then up, then down, then up. Really, really easy to avoid, and you can score a lot of damage on him that way. At times, he'll uh, do this, and he'll release two eggs that'll release two small worms. Really easy to destroy. Here's the pattern I was talking about earlier. Just score a lot of damage with Ice Wall. There we go. He's now down and out. I love how Ground Man stage is all trap based. Like right here you have these falling floors. And then coming up here shortly we'll be destroying these little totem pole type uh, creatures. And for every one you destroy it moves a spiked pillar closer to you. Which is a one hit kill obviously. So yeah, I really like uh, Ground Man stage. I like the music in his stage quite a bit as well. I don't think that it's one of my favorite tracks, but I do like it quite a bit. Right here is a split in the route that you can take. I'm about 50-50 on which one I usually take, but we'll go the lower route this time. Just gotta fall through the sand right here. I think that this route is actually quicker as well. And you don't have to deal with as many of those uh, spiked areas. And here we are on the final stretch of the stage. This is another trap based area. You got these little fish type creatures jumping up and then diving down through the dirt, causing endless pits to form. Copy vision isn't too bad of a weapon because it can destroy the creatures right as they come up. And here we are at Ground Man. I really like Ground Man's design overall. I think that it's really cool how he can transform into a big tank with spikes on the front of it and just ram around the room. His weakness is the remote mine. He has three other attacks besides transforming into the tank. He can either use his spread drill weapon, he can drill into the ceiling as you see right here and fire down a big drill. You can see where he's going at the top. He'll either go left or right, chasing you. And his last attack is to drill underground then try to come up from underneath you. If you're using remote mines on him, it'll keep him from drilling underground or drilling into the ceiling. So try to always keep a remote mine on him to avoid half of his attacks. For defeating ground men, you get the spread drill weapon. Spread drill is a pretty good weapon. I don't use it a whole lot myself. It's one of my least used weapons in Mega Man and Base, but I do like using it. It is really useful. Whenever you fire it, it shoots out a giant drill. If you press the attack button again, it'll split the giant drill into two medium-sized drills. And if you press the attack button one more time, it'll split the two medium-sized drills into four small drills. It has pretty good range, and uh, it's pretty powerful, so yeah, overall it is a nice weapon to have. Next up, we're going to take out Tengu Man. Tengu Man is quite a bit more difficult than his uh, Mega Man 8 battle was, and his stage is also more difficult. Although I do miss the Rush Jet segment that his stage had in Mega Man 8. Uh, if you're using his weakness on him, of course he's not going to be hard, but uh, if you're fighting him Buster only, he's definitely harder here in Mega Man of Base. Throughout the first section of the stage, you got all these balloons everywhere. Don't stay on the reddish orange color balloons too long, otherwise they'll pop underneath you. Don't let the clouds catch you, otherwise they'll slow you down and hinder your jumping, causing you to die. Do really well-timed jumps throughout here. And there we go. Obviously, Tengu Man's stage is based off of his own stage in Mega Man 8. Right here in this area is another split in the route that you can take. You can either go up and take that route, or you can stay low and take the lower route. We're going to take the lower route because it's quicker. You just have to go up here, then go to the right and drop down. There we go. I love destroying those birds using the wave burner. The green balloons will never pop underneath you, so don't worry about that. We don't have much further before we're done in this area. Just have to go to the right just a little more. Wait for another balloon. There we go. I like Tengu Man's music here in Mega Man and Bass, but I think that I like both of his Mega Man 8 songs a little better. Both his Saturn music and his PlayStation music. Whatever the case, though, I do like all of Tengu Man's songs, both his Saturn and his PlayStation music, and his music here in Mega Man and Bass. They're all pretty good songs. 
here where you start seeing tellies. It's not a bad idea to make a copy vision because the tellies will hunt down the clone instead. And up the ladder we go. These enemies always reminded me of like Grenade Man prototypes. They look a lot like Grenade Man and they throw a little explosive. So yeah, they always reminded me of Grenade Man from Mega Man 8. We got a lot of tellies throughout this area, so we'll just use a clone from Copy Vision to trick the tellies into chasing the wrong thing. Now we have a bunch of cannons. Let's take all of them out. There we go. I like how they kind of incorporated like little cracks in the pipe, even though it can be annoying. Uh, still kind of neat that they made you have to try to be careful with your shots. Even though I'm usually not careful, I don't care one way or the other if I ever break them. Whatever the case, so here we are, Tengu Man. His weakness is the spread drill. I love fighting Tengu Man with his weakness. Whenever the fight starts, I like to lure him over to the left and just keep knocking him into the hole over and over and over. It's just really fun to do, at least in my opinion it is. Just lure him over here, hit him into the hole, he'll come back up, hit him in again. And just keep on doing that over and over and over again. Poor Tengu Man. I'll let him get out. There we go. So yeah, I really do enjoy fighting Tengu Man here in Mega Man a base with his weakness. It's just so much fun to knock him into that hole over and over and over again. For defeating Tengu Man, you get the Tengu Blade weapon, which uh, has multiple uses. You can uh, use it close range to do quite a bit of damage to an enemy. If you use it from far away, it'll shoot a little wave of energy at the enemy. And one effect that they don't show you here at the Weapon Get screen is that if you slide while the weapon is equipped, Mega Man will actually dash and slash with the blade. Pretty cool how they uh, made it have like a little charge kick-like effect. Next up, we'll take out Magic Man. I love his little intro where he throws off the cloak and it becomes the Magic Rod. Obviously, Magic Man stage is based off a of Clown Man stage from Mega Man 8. I hate these little toy soldiers here in Mega Man and Base because if they get a hold of you, they drain your bolts really quickly. I really do love striking them all down with lightning bolt though, that's always fun. You have to ride on the trains to get through this area, even though it looks like you can walk on the tracks down below, they're actually endless pits. We'll just use spread drill for a little while to take out the monopellons, the little orange helicopter-like creatures. I like Magic Man stage a lot. I like the way how it looks. I like the music in it. And overall, I do have a fun time playing it. But one thing that I don't really like about Magic Man stage is how a lot of areas force you to wait around. Like right here with the trains, you have to wait to get a ride from them. Then uh, here in a little while, we'll be at the little mini boss of sorts with the stage, which is a little lion coin type enemy. Which it doesn't matter if you destroy it or not because another one will come back. The whole idea is that you just have to keep waiting on it to destroy the floor for you. So that's more waiting, and then even deeper into the stage, there will be little toy soldiers in the background that will ring a bell. And you have to wait on them because the bell triggers spikes on a platform. So there is quite a bit of waiting involved in this stage, but I still have a lot of fun playing it, but I wish that there wasn't so much of the waiting going on. That's alright though. Like I said, it is a fun stage, and I do enjoy playing it. We have a little vertical area here. you got to take the area to the right over here. Again, a little more waiting involved in this stage, but eh, like I said, doesn't really matter. It's still a fun stage. Up here at the top, I really like the design throughout this area. The little card houses. How they built all that up and everything. That looks pretty cool, I think. Like I said, I really enjoy striking down those toy soldiers using lightning bolt. We have an area here with uh, quite a few trains. Just drop down and head over to the left. You have to get a boost from one of the trains here. Coming right up ahead is the area with the toy soldiers in the background that ring the bell for you. Every time that they ring it, it causes the spikes on these platforms to rotate. So you have to pay attention to that. You don't have to wait on those particular platforms, but throughout this area you do. Just time your jumps really well and it ain't going to be no problem. These little spike platforms always kind of reminded me of the little spike platforms in uh, Dr. Kozak's stage in Mega Man 4. The ones that uh, had the little arrows on the sides of them and they'll flash and then the spikes will rotate. 
We're basically on the final stretch of the stage right now. We'll have a little more ways to go after we're out of this area, but we're pretty much on the final stretch right here. Let us take out the toy soldiers from the ladder using spread drill. Magic Man's door is just on the other side, so we're right by him. Here we go. Magic Man is weak to the Tengu Blade. I really like how Magic Man makes his entrance, how the spotlight shines on him, then he teleports in and throws the cloak off. I like how if you use the Tengu Blade on him, it shows his body getting cut in half, and every time you hit him, cards fall out. It's kind of funny. I always really enjoyed uh, dashing through him and slashing him for the final hit. I don't know why, I just always thought that that looked kind of cool. I really like the background here as well, with the clouds and the moon shining in the background. For defeating magic men, you get the magic card weapon, which you can shoot left, right, and you can also aim it straight up. It's not the most powerful weapon, it's got okay strength, but it's not the most powerful. It's really good on weapon energy, and it can bring items back to you. Overall, it's a pretty decent weapon. And well, that is it for part one.